Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Corey and you're my rubber ducks for the evening. And this is the series of episodes where we are creating a custom programming language, a scripting language really, but a custom programming language from scratch using some basic tools like Flex, Bison, uh, Google Test, ICU for our Unicode string processing. And of course, programming language of choice for this is C++ and we're using uh, Vim as our editor text editor and so everything's done in a uh, terminal window and yes yeah, so let's start here I guess we're on episode what episode number was that was that 89 episode number 89 all right and uh, normally we we say this let's see if I say get log see the last commit was the end of episode 88. We didn't do a lot in the previous episode. We did a lot of exploration. And we actually did something that we will need for this episode, but we'll get to that in a moment. And uh, if I say get status, we'll see that the only thing there is this call grind um, output, which is I'm going to move that to be call grind uh no what's do that call grind and that's going to be um how about uh before <laughs> before any changes Uh, or maybe better, uh, one moment, I have to sneeze. <sighs> Just pause it there so I could sneeze. Um, Before changes, sure, why not? Okay, so it's there, and that's just for my own reference. And let's see a few more things. If I edit the make file, uh, I want for what we're doing today, oops, I want our optimization to be on level three. Yeah. And now on the right hand side, let's just do a make clean and make test dash watch and that will get going all right so what's on the goal for today well we found out in the previous episode where we spent a little over an hour looking around double checking the byte code to make sure that we were getting the um optimization of a jump list in our assembly and then using cake cache grind to figure out where our um performance bottlenecks were. And one thing that we found out was that we are doing a whole lot of copying of our uh, computed expressions. One of the reasons is is because of our the way that we're we're doing we've got a stack based machine. And so it will copy things onto the top of the stack in order to operate on them. And one of the because we're we wrote a Fibonacci sequence, a very naive Fibonacci solver. Uh, yeah, calling the Fibonacci function is one of those bottlenecks because it's going to do it a lot of times. Um, and I probably should have looked up how, how many times it would have done it. But um, anyway, all right. And just for the sake, we are... Com compilation finished there. If I say time dot slash build apps um, tang dash s and feed in fib dot tang. There we go. So we're we're right at um, eight and a half. Uh, 
point eight five point nine uh, seconds, and we're going to see if we can improve that. So we're going to do that by changing the way that the function call works. That's the goal. I have no idea how we're going to do this. So uh, I know that we're going to need a new op code. So what else? A new op code, and that means we're going to need to change program dump, program execute, and the way that a function, so this is going to be an AST node. Um, function call. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't coughed all day. Then I get on here. Anyway, for the way that it's executed. We may need AST node identifier. May. We'll open it there. Okay, so we've got our, where is function? The next one, is it call? Yeah, call funk. Okay, we need, so this is where we pop a function. We need a version of this where we don't, where we use uh, something from the stack. And what is a good way of doing this? So it's an, um, do we want to just say underscore s? What would that look like? I'm obviously thinking out loud, but uh, as opposed to what? I mean, there's the top of the stack versus uh, an index. Maybe I uh, for index. And see, because I'm thinking later, you know, like add. Well, right now that's pulling two things from the stack, but maybe it's going to be um, an index and then the stack, or an index and an index, or a stack and then index. And th that's really four different options for an add opcode depending on what's there and that's just so I'm thinking at I'm thinking I for index and so this is now going to be get an arg C okay so it's still gonna have an arg count um, get index execute function at index if argc matches get index, execute function, at index if argc matches. Okay. So that's call func i. And now, what is the dump going to look like? call func underscore i and
with two and it's going to be out out code of that followed by plus two. All right, and this should be a three, I think. Okay, oh, and, and on the right-hand side, I should be calling this make. And now what am I looking for? I'm looking for call. Now this is bad. Call funk. Hundred and twenty nine lines. We need to, uh, twenty nine. We need to move this out into a function. Yep. here hmm and it ends there kind of there this is going to call the function so what all do we need uh, let's see. Let's make this as a void, static void. Call funk. And the problem is, so execute program check is going to, oh, it wants this byte code. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This should be fine because we're not going to do that there. We'll, we'll allow that to. So what all is going to be passed in? The stack, what is the stack? Uh, we'll figure out that in a moment. Um, the argc. How about the function? So I think let's do garbage collected ampersand function. argc is um, u integer t stack is going to be we'll figure that out in a moment uh, vector of garbage collected fine um,
stack, and what else? Oh, or we still have to call stack check. Uh, no, we could. No, we won't have to. Okay. So we're going to pass in argc, what else? We've got pc stack and fp stack. We've got a mpc, great, and fp. Those are size t's, okay. So, um... Size T, PC, size T, ampersand FP, what else, uh, oh the PC stack, those are vectors of size T, PC stack, and FP stack. Oh, do I need the library alias stack as well? Well, we're about to find out. Vector of size t. PC stack and a vector of size t ampersand fp stack oh that's right that's fine And do I need the library alias stack? It's in library save, library copy, and that's it. Okay. That's not not bad. Now, assuming all of this is getting passed in, I don't think I need any of this. And let's get everything indented properly, okay. And now I should just be able to do the call func with the function argc pcfp stack pc stack fp stack. Sure. Call func with what all did I say? Um function argc pc fp stack pc stack fp stack i think that's what it was and if that's the case then
yeah, call func that. All right, now. Call funk, and what did I do that as? I, yes. For the moment, let's do that. Um, oh, I didn't do the context. Uh, or the byte code. So, I think I've done this before, but I don't remember. So we'll say the WSL view of docs, HTML index there. And what I want to see, show me program. And what type is bytecode? It is a bytecode type capital B and that in and of itself oh is a type def okay that's fine so we need bytecode and context all right we will add those bytecode and context. Don't need to write it yet. Um, what did I say? Bytecode ampersand bytecode and then context ampersand context. Sure. And then we need to go to line 160. Well, no, that's the context. Where is bytecode? Oh, 172. And of course, I forgot to make this compile. And again, the goal is as long as it compiles and all the tests pass, we should be good. That means we passed everything appropriately. And now we just need to set up our new opcode. That's the goal. All tests have passed. No seg faults. <laughs> Uh, so go back to call now I'm gonna copy as much as we can and this time the function is not going to be in the stack back. Rather, it's going to be execute program check of two, and the function is going to be something here. So, 769. What I need to know is how does peak work? Uh, 
I have to do a stack check on that position and then FP plus position. Okay, I'm just gonna yank these lines and go back to the call. There we go. Um, and just say position is this bytecode plus one. Is that right? No, I think that will be two, the order I put these in. And then uh, I need to stack check that position. Okay. And then um, function is that. And I don't need to remove it from the back of the stack. That should work. We hope. All right. Um, again, make it compile. Everything should pass because we haven't implemented anything with call func i. All right. So now, call func i. In our node function call, AST node function call, when we compile it, this is push the arguments onto the stack, blah, blah, blah. Push the function on the stack. Thing is, is what is function? So what we're going to say is is an identifier, then use the call func i opcode. So if the type ID of this arrow function is equal to the type ID of computed expression, no, it's not a computed expression, it is an AST node identifier else now first of all it's not going to like this I need to do AST node identifier and if I'm going to do that I need to save my make file or change my make file uh, a lot of tests are should fail now by the way And why? Because AST node function call
now is going to have dep ast node identifier. Problem is, is that's down here. So there. Uh, still not going to pass uh, because now I've got to say well if that is the case then what do I do auto ampersand identifier is equal to static cast of an AST node identifier ampersand of star this arrow function. Okay, that should be a static cast. Now what do I want to do with that identifier? Uh, if I edit the Well, actually, do I have identifier? I do. I, I knew I would need that. In order to compile it, normally that means I need to load from stack, peak, and that's what I need. Where is it? Right there. Otherwise, the identifier is not found. OK. So you know what? I'm just going to yank all of that and then deal with it as I need to. There, identifier convert. Um, instead of this arrow name, it needs to be identifier conv dot name can we access the name of that that's a very good question AST node identifier Okay. Um, oh, the name is public. That's always nice. Do I need to set the annotation? Load from stack? No. Um, the opcode is not peak, it is call funk sub i identifier at this name but I need the argument count first Uh, argument count. Oh, right there. Uh, 
else. I'm not going to go the whole identifier not found. I'm just going to return and let it fall through. I think I like that better. to the default compilation. Okay, so let's get this again. Push the arguments onto the stack, that's fine. If the function is an identifier, then we'll do the call func i. And what is that? Um, we're just getting the name You know what? Name. Name. There we go. Simplifies it. If name is in the identifiers, then we say, okay, add call func i with its the argc and then the um, its location what Oh, 48, line 48, 48, 48. At name. Hopefully this works. <laughs> no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like we're in an infinite loop at the moment. Probably. Let's look at the execute. So when we call func i, call the function, so this says pc plus equals 2. Is there ever a time where the PC is not incremented, is my question. Save the current execution environment so that it can be restored. Oh, that's why. So here's what I'm thinking. There's a case.
Yeah. These are all PC plus equals two. So here's what I think we need to do. What I think we need to say is auto old PC is equal to PC, call it, and if PC is still equal to old PC, then PC plus equals two. That way if call function changes the program counter, then we won't change it. And this will be call func might change the PC and we want to know whether or not it changes PC. There. Appropriately. All right, and we will do the exact same thing down here. Except for PC plus equals two, we will do PC plus equals three. And now, everywhere where there is a PC plus equals, Rerun the compile. See if we got rid of our infinite loop. We have not. <laughs> Why? When we call a native function, ooh, okay, I think I know. We're gonna go back up, not that. Um, call func, that's what I want. When it is a compiled function, that we're saying plus two
Okay, so what we're going to do is undo that and we're going to pass one more variable that is a size t opcode size. All right, opcode size and PC plus equals opcode size. All right, now we just need to pass in what the opcode size is going to be. Um, and that, and this one is two, whereas on this one, it is three. Let's see if this does anything. Still have an infinite loop. All right. So, why? That's the question. I'm glad you asked. Oh, I know what I wanted to do, but I'm, I'm just going to continue through here, make sure that our opcode sizes are good. Because we had to do that anyway, definitely. What are we doing with opcode though? I mean bytecode. Because aren't we passing in bytecode? That makes me suspicious. Bytecode. Uh, okay, that's it. How about this? Um, C out. C out what? Um, this dump bytecode. That's just so we can see what's going on. I remember this is a Fibonacci.
Wait, what? Oh. Yeah, we're not running the Fibonacci heap. This is a completely different one. These are all the programs. Of course. So let's uh, get a little bit more info, shall we? Code. this again. For some reason I'd convince myself that we were only running the Fibonacci program. Nope. Oh, did I not finish? Well, I should have. Um, in the dump byte code, call func i pc plus one comma pc plus two. Let's edit a file I forgot about opcode.cpp because right here where's call funk it's trying to print out print and yeah it can't because it doesn't exist. Okay, this is weird. String high, peak zero, which is the string high, print, pop the result, jump to 10. Uh, try one more thing. On the execute, C 
see out um, PC followed by opcode this arrow bytecode PC. This is going to be ugly, and it's going to print out a lot of junk. I officially don't know what's happening. Did I forget a break somewhere? Have a break there. Call Funk I. Have a break there. Jump to ten. That should be ending it, though. All right, you know what I always say. And if this still throws us a, a compile, I'll run it through GDB. Uh, still throws a compile. If it still uh, dies on us, I'll do that. Because it's acting like it's getting into an infinite loop, which means the PC is not being incremented. I mean, it could be uh, that the PC isn't being incremented properly. But that doesn't make sense because we're supposed we're trying to print out each time. Set. We'll we'll figure this out. Still doing it. All right, so GDB it is. GDB uh, dot slash, what is this? Build apps test. Is this just test? Test. Run. takes longer program no longer exists there is no stack okay
This makes no sense. All right. So, in the make file, let's We had to remake it all. Um, because it was all compiled with the special flags and now we need it all with the debug stuff. So the debug stuff is present. This is here. gonna die we have no idea what it's doing okay uh, we want to run it here The only other time I've seen something like this is uh, when we might get a deadlock, right, uh, with our locks, but I don't think we're using that here. Pop, jump. This is not the first program that's had a jump. I mean, this one here. We have a break, so it has a jump. So it's not the jump instruction. I am truly perplexed I break print high hmm uh forgot what I was going to do just for the moment got a new window so that I can run this while I Ask GDB to run again. Looks like it's running. Pegging out the CPU. It's using up all the memory. I mean, I'm not the only one who saw that, right? Run it again. Yep, using up eight gigs. And then when it dies, back down to 200 megs. That's impressive. Uh, what on earth is causing that? Uh, I officially have no idea what to do. Does it only work on that one? Print high, where is that? Edit, test, test. It 
it looks like it's on this one. Wait a second. I bet this is fine. I bet. Is that the first? The first occurrence of the word function is right here. And we're this is the first yeah I bet this is the first function being called and that's where it's dying okay now I think I know um, four See out name. Just want to get that. No wait. Yeah, it's the so the compile. So I'm going to hide that. Get rid See, I shouldn't have just, there. The whole point is I don't care if it, um, goes into its infinite loop what I want to see is the compile does it give me the name a it does okay edit let's go back to that test look for the word function there we go and before we do that, I want to say see out p5 dump bytecode. And I'll bet we'll get a dump here. Do we not? Did I make a stupid mistake? Probably.
What is it not like that I'm returning? So I got the C out name. That was an A. Call func underscore I. Just to see if we made it there. We did. See out um, again. This is a uh, just a C. If we get through the dump byte code, which we should be able to see it, but we did. So this all looks correct so far. So then I'm thinking it's a problem when executing. So If we go to the execute, call funk with two versus Call funk with three. never making it there. Okay. Expecting to see it here too. And I'm not. Oh, but we don't even get to the dump byte code.
because yeah if I comment that out in fact if I even add a C out This is probably something really stupid that I've done. We never get to here too. Now this is in the calling. So when compiling Two code blocks. And again, just trying to figure out where the problem is. Jump past the function declaration.
Uh, it's private. Yeah, no. Do I have that function? I guess so. <laughs> Okay, so the code is this here, function A. This is for a code. I'm just at the beginning of it. One is of course a jump and we don't know where we're jumping to yet because we're just now getting to that. So, um, that can go away and I'm going to edit the source program. Is it an analyze? Because that's a new thing. Or optimize. Optimize, there we go. If this is a problem, a, a bug in my optimize, uh, I'm not gonna be happy. Just put a break in there. Okay, so we're not getting here. So we're not making it to this point because print high, break print high is the previous one and it is working. Okay, so we're not making it to optimize. Uh, that means we need to edit program, just program. Compile. What is this? Oh, push environment. That's fine. figure out where this is dying
one, uh, two, three, four, five. At this point, it's shorter to hit replace. Seven, eight. Is there another one? Nope. Okay. Each program should do a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but we're not making it through the optimize. Why are we not making it through the optimize? Didn't I just decide that we were making it through? Or is it we're not making it through this? We're not making it through the analyze. Okay, what's happening in analyze? I know what's happening in analyze. Do you? I have an entry for call func and I don't have an entry for call func I. Hey, all tests are passing. What do you say we start removing some of this junk now? Uh, I don't even know where all this is. <laughs> uh, this is on the execute, you know, this is fine if I get rid of that. Oh, and look, Sometimes it's here one, sometimes it's here two. So those were working. So test still has something, uh, that's fine, because I want to...
Sim program. Oh, it's in program optimize. Oh, I didn't write. All right, and now we can look at the test. That was a waste of 30 minutes. But what does this look like? Uh, null val jump to 12. 12 is function, poke it into zero. When it's time to call it, we call. Yep. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah, right there. Excuse me, which is at location zero. Yeah, that's exactly what it should have been doing. Now the question is, does it take longer now? <laughs> um, let's find out, shall we? Replace that with a three. There we go. Get this compiling faster. Since it's not on the watch, it's just this. This scares me. It makes me think it's going to run longer. Well, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. Uh, apps. What is this? Tang. Dash S and feed in fib dot tang. Fingers crossed. Okay. It's a little shorter. <laughs> but it's consistently shorter. Wait, not just consistently shorter. I'm just, I'll grab this one here. This is the original episode 88. And this is going to be after what? Call Funk I Episode eighty nine. And I mean it's five hundredths of a second, five milliseconds faster. <laughs> Maybe not the biggest of wins, but it's something. That tells me that there is definitely work. So if we did the exact same thing to our subtract and um, and 
edition. Well, all of them, but uh, that could turn into some savings. Yes. Okay. And again, kind of what we're comparing against. Do I have the... I don't have the... Fib.tang, uh, fib.py, vim, fib.py, uh, return in, return that print that that should work oh whoops there uh, try to run that again Yeah, Python's still faster, and I knew that, right? I, I already know that going in, but we are definitely faster now. Okay, so why did I close that? I didn't mean to necessarily. Let's see. So let's kind of wrap this up, shall we? Um, get status. We've got all of these. Um, we don't need fib.py. Um, I'm going to call grind out we're going to call this call grind out one dot before changes and next time we can do it a, a two or something but um, for now get diff um, we need to change our optimization back on the make file just because right now um, G okay our ASC node function call we had to add an uh, a dependency that's fine we added our call func I to opcode.hpp Uh, to our compile, we made a special case if the, the function is an identifier and we can find the identifier, then we can generate a special set of instructions for it. Okay, um, opcode.cpp, we added a definition uh, so it can print out nicely. So that's the two things we forgot. The opcode.cpp but remember that rather rather quickly and then the um, where's the other one was that an optimization uh, or analyze analyze is where we forgot all right um, let's see this is analyze yep that's the one we forgot And it is three, right? PC plus equals three, yes. And then dump bytecode. 
Yes, that's fine. Call funk, had to move that out. And now, have our, we call the call funk or there's the call funk I. Yep. All right. So nothing else that we need to remove. Add call func i opcode. Optimize function calls. Yeah. Do we need? Yes, we do. We need to make our docs PDF. Maybe we should just make that make docs. Could be. Oddly enough, I'm about to change something on us. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to vim our uh, source. No, not source. Include tang.hpp. Why? Because this has not what I'm looking for. Uh, vim include Tang base. Yeah, this is the main page thing. And well, that's the license. Where is it's the README? Because in our example, we say Tang double colon tang base, and that is wrong. We figured that out a little while ago, and I completely forgot um, to update our documentation. So, what should it be? It should be um, isn't it make shared? Tang make shared. Where is that? Tang base. Is that what the problem is? First of all, well, should be make shared. And now our include for tang base
Okay, so that fixes our documentation. All right, uh, get add include tang base in the readme. Yeah, get add readme. Let's do that commit get commit dash M um, correct documentation on creating the shared pointer to tang base okay that's fine. Now, rerun. Oops, need to back up. And when this is done, I'm going to reload this. Always use there. There we go. And when we push it to GitHub, it'll be updated there as well, the, the readme. Okay. Box for episode 89 I remember that now because uh well the previous one was 88 and that's how many keys are on a piano All right so get push get tag dash a Episode dot zero eight nine. Our message is episode dot zero eight nine. That's pushed. Customary last thing is uh, our code count didn't go up much, but we got well. You may say, Corey, five hundredths of a second isn't that much, but you realize we not only did we get a five hundredths of a second increase, we got, um, I mean, out of Now I want to know. Just using... Let's get more buttons for the sake of more buttons. Um, what is the point? Uh, 826 minus point seven eight eight. Oh. <laughs> it's less 3.8 um, but if I divide that by 0. 0.826 4.6% increase in efficiency right well it's taking 4.6% less time um, I don't think that that's a that that's a bad thing. Yeah. All right. So GitHub is corrected now. Our documentation is up to date. Where does this put us? Well, next time I think we're going to look at more of the 
what we can do. Um, what's the, the word? Uh, efficiency wise. And one of those might be enhancing our subtraction. Because as it so happens, Fibonacci uses an n minus 2 and an n minus 1. It uses it twice. And those will, uh, and even the less than, uses n. And if we don't have to copy those, that's a lot of, of things that we could get rid of. In fact, if we're using the minus twice that we could get rid of uh, two peak instructions, I just had a realization, but I'll I'll think about it later. Uh, <laughs> not while you're while you're staring at me. Um, but if we were able to buy two calls to fib, replacing those with referencing the stack um, explicitly, we could do the same thing with these two minuses, uh, and that might give us another, well, another three point whatever percent and do the same thing with the less than. And you say, of course, we're kind of tailoring it just to this um, piece of code. Yeah, but it's letting us see. Uh, once you do it with the minus, it's easier to, to, to do it with the plus. And once you've done it with the plus, it's, I mean, then it's easy to do it with all the others as well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a handy thing. We can, we're going we're gonna to work on that. And the thing that I was thinking about is, I'm just going to pull it up, vim our source at program execute. This, I probably should have done that. And if I do that, nope, not position. If I did that, I now want to know. Would this give us an even bigger? <laughs> I just want to know. I don't think that made everything. No, it did not. Okay, redoing it. Did I? Oh, make dash J. I didn't say make test. Evidently, computers are difficult for me. <laughs> and now, if we time.
slash Uh, what is this? Oh, it's called Tang. Yeah. Look at that. Consistently, one ampersand. Pretty consistent. That's another 2%, maybe. We're going to leave that for the next commit. <laughs> That's going to be our very next commit. And um, yeah, That's, it hit me while I was talking. It's like, huh, I didn't, uh, this is causing another copy. Without the ampersand, it's causing a copy. And it's like, no, 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 I just want to reference. That way I can push or I can use that here. Um, it would have been the exact same as, as if I had not done function and I just did stack if I'd put that in this place. Yeah. The only reason that we don't do it up here is because we are popping it off the stack and so we need to, um, pop and remove. So anyway, okay, that's it. I'm stopping. That is the end for tonight. <laughs> it is... What time is it? Past 1 a.m. for me, and that's okay. I am extremely happy for um, for where we were, what we've gotten done. And going from 0.826 to 0 0.759, 0 0.76, um, that's good. That's pretty good. I'm happy. All right, uh, having said that, thank you for joining me. You have a great day, night, whatever time you're watching this, and see you next time. Bye.